Shalom to the twelve tribes scattered to the four corners of the earth. All praise to the Most High Yahweh, Basham, Mashiach Yahweh Shai. This is Matthew chapter 6 and 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve the Most High and Mammon. So Mammon, if you look it up in the Strong's Concordance, means riches, money, possessions, uh, property. So this is talking about those people who put money and riches or their physical possessions over the Most High God, Yahweh, right? But still say that they're following the Most High, right? And an example of this could be someone that works to make money on the Sabbath, right? When Exodus chapter uh, 20 verses 8 through 11 and many other verses say that you are not supposed to work on the Sabbath according to the Most High's laws. So another example of this would be when someone is doing something against um, the Most High's laws to make money, right? Whether it be uh, killing to make money, whether it be stealing from fellow Israelites, selling drugs, pharmaceuticals, or anything like that to other Israelites to make money, uh, stripping, prostitution, selling pork, doing tattoos, selling lascivious clothes etc etc right so the main master though that many people serve that i see in these last days besides money is themselves right many people serve themselves instead of the most high right the most high it comes second to themselves they treat themselves like they are the most high god right because they serve themselves they serve their own flesh they serve their own sin they serve their own lusts right some people say their master is the most high yahweh but he's really not in their hearts right that's just a lie that they tell themselves to make themselves feel better right because no man can serve two masters and these types of people actually serve themselves. They serve themselves through pleasing themselves over pleasing the Father. Through uh, pornography, masturbation, through smoking weed, through uh, fornication, right? Through doing other drugs or alcohol, through giving in to lustful uh, temptations and any other temptations that go against the Most High and His law and His word in general. They serve themselves by giving the Most High a few short seconds or minutes of their day and then spend the majority of their day doing anything else that they want to do because it makes them feel good, right? Because they are their own God, right? And their own self is their real master. So that's all that's really important to them when it comes to doing what they want to do They're over the Most High. See, before we came into the truth, we were slaves to the so-called white man's religions. We were servants to the lies that we held on to. But now some of our people that broke free from those chains and forms of slavery and realized that they were lies, they don't even realize that by falling back into your own sin, you are becoming a servant again. You are becoming a servant to sin, right? John Chapter 8 and verse 34 says, Yahweh Shai answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. So you have to always remember and keep in mind that you cannot serve two masters. You can't serve the most high God of the Bible, Yahweh, and at the same time serve yourself or be giving yourself over and over and over again to your sin. Because this type of slavery or servitude to sin will lead you to your spiritual death and when you know that following any other master beside Yahweh will lead you to death and you continue to follow it then that's you choosing to basically commit spiritual suicide right because there's many people that know the most high's word and they know that it leads to life they know for a fact that it's the truth but instead of following it they are choosing, you are choosing to follow your own lusts for things, for people, for pleasures, for money, 
for all anything against him and therefore you are choosing death you are choosing to jump off that spiritual cliff you are choosing to aim that gun at your head and pull that trigger spiritually right and commit that spiritual suicide so proverbs chapter 11 and verse 19 says as righteousness tendeth to life so he that pursue evil pursue it to his death right when you pursue evil you are going to pursue pursue it to your death tobit chapter 12 and verse 10 says they that sin are enemies to their own life right you have to realize that when you're always choosing sin you become your own worst enemy this is why i always tell people your worst enemy the person that you're going to be fighting all the time on a daily basis is yourself right so we must walk in the spirit in the word in order to serve the most high we must walk in the spirit to serve the most high right what does this mean to truly sincerely walk in the spirit so we have to know two things first what is the spirit and how do we walk in it right so let's let's read john 6 and 63 it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profiteth nothing the words that i speak unto you they are spirit and they are life so this is yahweh our messiah speaking right so the spirit quickens you makes you wiser and quicker to understand the word and life in general the flesh profiteth or profits nothing all your uh lustly fleshly desires and ways profit you nothing it actually does the opposite of profiting you because you have to be punished for those fleshly things so then it says the words i speak unto you are spirit and life right so this word this bible this is the spirit of the most high the holy one of israel yahweh right yahweh basham yahweh shai because it says yahweh shai was the word made into the flesh right so i've had so many so-called christians ask me if i quote unquote have the spirit right and i tell them yes because i have the word right but they don't understand that most cannot understand that they think the spirit is something that makes them uh speak in gibberish tongues and that no one can understand or that is something that makes them run around their church building doing circles i've seen this personally in in apostolic churches right but no the spirit is the word of the most high and it, it he gives us the spirit to dwell in us when we when he finds us worthy for it right and walking in the spirit or walking by the spirit means having these precepts in your head and in your heart and doing what it says instead of following your own lustful ways right so now let's go to galatians 5 and 16 this i say then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh so to truly be walking in the spirit of yahweh by shem yahweh shai means to not do what it means to not fulfill the lust of the flesh so you have to stop fulfilling the lust of the flesh there's no way around it right either you are walking in the spirit and the most high is your master or you are fulfilling your own lust and you are your own master right which in reality means that satan is your master which which uh we all know where that's gonna lead to right because he is the one tempting you to fulfill these lusts so let's read uh that one more time and keep going so that i can make another point real quick so this this i say then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh verse 17 for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary the one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that ye would so the flesh and the spirit are contrary one to the one to another meaning they are against one another right like the two masters so you cannot do the things that ye would meaning that your flesh is fighting against the spirit so that you cannot do the things that you want to do by walking in the spirit it is a constant battle especially when you first decide to follow the most high like it says in sirach 2 and 1 you will be tempted right 
You've come to serve the Most High. Prepare your soul for temptation, man. Verse 18, but if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. So Christians take this verse out of context and say, see, I'm led by the Spirit. I don't have to follow the laws of the Bible anymore. But it's clear that that's not what this means if you know other precepts and if you just read the the next verse and you read it all in context right if ye be led of the spirit ye are not under the law so let me give you all a real world example real quick if you go outside right now and rob somebody right right in front of a cop what's going to happen to you you rob someone the law says you have to be arrested stand trial and and most likely do some time for stealing from somebody right so why do you have to be arrested in due time though because the law says so right you broke the law and now you are subject to that law or now you are under that law now coming back to the verse it says but if ye be led of the spirit ye are not under the law so if you are truly being led by the Rakah Kadash, which is the Holy Spirit in Paleo Hebrew you are being led by the Holy Spirit and the word of the Most High, ye are not under the law or under the punishment of the law because you are going to be following the laws because you are being led by the Spirit. Like it says, right? If you are being led by the Spirit, you are not going to be breaking the laws and therefore you're not under the penalty or the punishment of the law, right? Which makes completely complete sense if you just read it in context and know uh, uh, what the Most High is talking about, right? Verse 19, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, all right, idolatry, a big one, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings and such like of the which i tell you before as i have also told you in the time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of the most high so i'm not going to break down each one or each and every one of these works of the flesh but i strongly suggest that you look into to what each one of them means in the blue letter bible and work on any of these that you may be committing because if you are like it says you will not enter into the kingdom right but some of the main ones that i see i mean adultery obviously right do not cheat on your husband or wife do not cheat on the most high as well fornication don't be having sex and not seeing it as marriage because forn fornication is just that sex is supposed to be marriage right a man's a man's penis is like the finger and the man, the woman's vagina is like a wedding ring right that's what it symbolizes it's, it's just a symbol the, the ring and going to court isn't what makes you married having sex is what makes you married right then uh lasciviousness is definitely a big one as well lasciviousness is attracting sexual attention towards you the way women be dressing with their with their chest all popping out showing all their legs their their uh behinds all hanging out of their shorts that is lasciviousness right envying people right wrath hatred hating your brother right uh witchcraft which goes into pharmaceuticals that's a form of witchcraft murders drunkenness revelings all these things you will not inherit the kingdom if you do not repent of these things right so it's very important that you remember that you cannot serve two masters if you are serving anyone but the most high you are on the path to spiritual suicide and you are an enemy to your own life like we read right so be led of the spirit be read be led of the word of the most high yahweh basham yahweh shai because the flesh will profit you nothing in the long run right so all praise to the most high yahweh basham hamashiach yahweh shai y'all stay in the spirit i'm gonna try and be posting uh from here on out at least two uh lessons a day so shalom y'all have a good one